Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to set up our dagger hill library for dependency injection. If you don't know what dependency injection is, then make sure to check out this video first, where I just explain what that actually is. That is part of my running tracker app, but you don't need to follow through this playlist. You can just watch this video to understand what dagger is about. If you know what dependency injection is and you just don't know what dagger hilt is, then this is the right video for you because I will explain that from scratch. So the first thing we want to do here in this app for dagger hilt is we want to create an application class. Uh, that is just necessary to annotate that for dagger hilt so that it just knows that application class that we are able to have access to our application context to be able to inject it. Um, into classes and also to construct dependencies with that context. So what we will do is we will go to our root package and create a new Kotlin file class called Spotify application and select class here. We will let this Spotify application class inherit from application. This one. Um, for now it does not need a body here, but we will annotate this with add hilt Android app. So that is the annotation that you always need when you want to use dagger hilt in your project. And as I said, that will just mark this class as your application class for dagger hilt because it internally needs some of the stuff we have in this class. And now it's not enough to just declare an application class. You maybe know that already that does not have anything to do with dagger hilt now, but we also need to specify that this is our application class in our Android manifest. So what we will do is we will open our manifest here and in this application tag here, we just want to add a name entry and here Android Studio already suggests us a Spotify application. We just press enter to auto complete that and then we are good to go. So uh, that's the first part of this video. The second part is actually creating our dependencies in so-called modules. So we declare modules for dagger hilt in which we just kind of give the manual how we create the dependencies we want to provide for our specific classes, so for our servers, for our activity, for our fragments and so on. And let's actually just create that module and the rest will get clearer in this video. So in our root package here, we create a new package called DI for dependency injection. And then in that DI package, we will create a new Kotlin file class which will be an object. So each module with dagger hilt is an object, so a singleton, and we call that app module because the app module will provide all the dependencies that live as long as our application does. So that's why we call it app module here. We press enter. This video is sponsored by myself. If you want to take your learning to the next level, then click the first link in this video's description to get to my website, where you will find over 300 quiz questions for all my videos, take notes, climb the leaderboard and compete with other Android developers just by creating a free account. And now on the one hand, we need to annotate this module with add module, just to tell Dagger that this is a module class for us. And we also need to add another annotation, which is add install in. And in the parentheses, we specify, well, we have to specify a component into which we install this module. So that component now specifies the actual lifetime of the dependencies inside of this module. And as I said, we want to restrict the lifetime of the dependencies inside of this module to our whole application's lifetime. So all of these will be singletons and we only have a single instance of these as long as our application lives. And that's why we install that module into the so-called application component, double colon class. And what do we now put inside of this app module block here? Well, as I said, we need to put in the manual. We need to explain to Dagger Hilt how it should create the dependencies we need. Because of course, Dagger Hilt doesn't know that. We need to tell it that. And let's start to provide a dependency that we need throughout the entire lifetime of our app, which is our glide instance. So our image loading library, we will use that as a singleton with some default options that we set here in this app module once. And then we can simply inject that everywhere without us needing to set those default options over and over again. So what we will do is we will create a function and we call that function provide glide instance. So that is basically the naming convention for 
functions in our modules here because each of the each of our functions that we declare in this app module here provides something and in our case it provides the glide instance here and now we need to think about do we need any parameters for that function so as parameters we would now pass those objects that are required to create this glide instance and do we actually need something to create that glide instance that we don't know yet yes we do need the application context so we need to pass that here as a parameter so we specify context which is a context of course and usually if we would need some other dependencies, some other objects here to create that instance, then we would just pass them as a parameter here. And that would only work if Dagger Hilt knows how to create them. So if we have other provide functions for those. So let's say this glide instance would need a specific string or I don't know what, then this would only work if we would have a provides function that provides the string. But in this case, we only need the context and Yes, we don't have a function that provides the context here, but Dagger Hilt knows our application context because we annotated our Spotify application class with add Hilt Android app. But what we need to do is we need to annotate this context parameter with add application context. So that will just insert this context behind the scenes for us. So we don't need to worry about that. Well, and now we can create our actual glide instance. So we set that equal to glide dot with and you can see that now takes the context here which we just passed the context we pass as a parameter so also remember we never call this function on our own that will do dagger hilt behind the scenes for us dagger hilt will generate a whole bunch of classes in our generates folder and we don't even have to look at these that will work and it's just important that you know that Dagger Hill does all that behind the scenes and it just looks like magic, but it actually isn't. So we set that equal to glide.with, pass our context and call dot set default request options. So here we can just set some default options we want to have in each of our glide instances or actually in this glide instance because we will use the same glide instance everywhere in our application. So that will be a singleton. And here we can just create such a request options object we call a dot actually in the next line a dot placeholder so we can set a graphic as a placeholder when that image is not fully loaded then it will instead display this placeholder image which will be our um, dot drawable we need to import r here alt plus enter r dot drawable dot ic image and we also want to set an error resource so when something went wrong with the loading, then we also just want to display our .drawable.ic image. And we want to set the disk cache strategy to disk cache strategy .data. So that will just make sure that our images are cached with Glide. So, and now we need to tell Dagger Hill that we actually want to provide something with that function. And that, that is very easy. We can just use add provides above that function and that is already everything we need to do but what we also should do here is we should annotate this function as well with at singleton so what this annotation here will do is it will make sure that we will only have a single instance of this glide instance we created here because usually when we don't have that then every time we request an instance of this glide instance here so every time we inject that somewhere in our app then Dagger Hilt will create a new instance of that. But we don't want that. We can just take the same instance, which is more performant. And to make sure that Dagger Hilt actually does that, that it gives us the same instance over and over again, we annotate that with add singleton. But don't confuse this singleton here with this application component. This application comp component here just means that all the dependencies inside of this app module will live as long as our application does and the singleton annotation means as i said that this specific instance here that glide instance has only a single instant throughout the entire lifetime of our app so we won't request multiple instances of that glide instance and that's already it for our app module but we will have another module here in our app which is the service module so 
In the service module, our dependencies should, of course, not live as long as our whole application does. Instead, they should only live as long as our service does because we don't need them outside of our service. And for that, we create a separate module inside of our DI package, create a new Kotlin follow class here, select object, and call that a service module. Press enter, and we also annotate that with add module on the one hand, and we also need to install that module into a specific component. So add install in. And this time it's not the application component because this time we want to restrict the lifetime of the dependencies inside of this module to our services lifetime. So we specify the service component. So Dagger Hilt has such components for each major Android component. So for um, also, for example, for fragment, fragment component, activity component, and so on and so forth. So inside of our service, we will actually play the music. So the service will be, I think, the biggest class in our project here. We need to do quite a lot of stuff there. And for that, we need some dependencies as well. On the one hand, we need so-called audio attributes, which just save some meta information about our player. So we will create a function, provide audio attributes. These don't need any dependencies to be created, so we don't need to pass any parameters. And we just set that equal to audio attributes and equal to audio attributes from com Google Android Excel Player 2, not those first audio attributes. So import these second ones here, dot builder. And we want to set the content type to capital C dot content type music because we play music in our player. And we want to set the usage to capital C dot usage media. And then we can simply call dot build on that. So that is just something that we need for our extra player that we will create right afterwards. And we create that in our service module because then we don't need to create that in our actual service class, which would make it more messy. So we again have to annotate this with add provides. And this time we cannot annotate this with add singleton because that is not an application wide singleton since we only use this in our service and not in our whole application. And for that, if we use service component here, there is an equivalent to that singleton annotation, and that is at service, service, come on, service scoped. There it is. So that will just mean that we will have the same instance of these audio attributes in our same service instance. Then the next provides function here in this class, in this object, will be a function to provide our actual Excel player. So that is actually the player that will play our music. And that also takes some dependencies to be created. On the one hand, that will be the context again. So add application context, context, which is of type yeah, context. And we also need these audio attributes here that we created to create our Excel player because we want to set these audio attributes to our player. So what we simply need, need to do is we need to pass these as a parameter here, audio attributes, which are of type audio attributes. And what Dagger Hilt will do is behind the scenes, it will check which dependencies or which objects we need to create this Excel player. And it will see, okay, we need a context. I can get that from our application class and we need audio attributes. Oh, how can we create these? And then Dagger Hilt will automatically see, okay, we have a provides function for those audio attributes. So it knows how to create these audio attributes because we gave it this manual here. So it will simply pass those audio attributes, that instance here, as a parameter for these audio attributes. And we can simply use them in this provide Excel player function. So we will just set that equal to simple Excel player dot builder which will take the context here dot build and then we can call dot apply on that to set the audio attributes to that Excel player. So we call set audio attributes and we pass the audio attributes we pass as a parameter. And we can also set the second parameter of this function handle audio focus just to true. And we also want to set handle audio becoming noisy to true. 
So that will just pause our music player, for example, if the user um, plugs in his headphones, then it will just pause our music player because it could be very noisy for the user. So he needs to click on play again. And that's already our instance for the exo player. We want to annotate that function again with add provides and add service scoped. And we will have one more provides function here in our service module, which will also be annotated with add service scoped and add provides. And that will be a function provide data source factory. So that is just, well, the name already says it, a source of our data. So we will use that actually to provide our actual music source later on. So our music source will just be our Firebase source. We will also create that later. And we just need such a data source factory for that when we use Excel player. So that will only take the context again, add application context, context of type context. And we set that equal to default data source factory. We pass the context as a parameter. And as a second parameter, we need to pass a user agent, which, which is basically just a name with which a player can see who is actually connected to it. So we will just use util from player 2util here dot get user agent, we pass the context again. And here we can just um, choose an application name that we just want to append to that user agent string, which will just be let's say Spotify app, you can choose anything here. And that are actually all the dependencies we can create for now, we will add some more later when we created some more classes. But for now, that is everything we, need, we can do here. And just to test if everything is working, we can just inject something into our main activity. Here we can only inject our glide instance because the other stuff is service scoped and our main activity is not a service. And yeah, if we just inject something here and our app does not crash, that means it is working. So we can just annotate that with add inject here and inject the late init var our glide instance, which is of type request manager. And if we inject something into Android components, then we need to annotate this component. So our activity in this case, with at Android entry point. So just remember that you always need to do that also for services for fragments, just for all Android components. And I think before we run this, we need to go to our activity layout. Um, activity main XML. Yeah, we have two things to change here on the one hand that is just main activity here. And we need to remove this nav graph here because we don't have that yet we will set that up later. But otherwise our app just won't launch here. And I just forgot to remove that before I pushed it to GitHub. But if we now run our app, and wait until the build is finished. If this does not crash, that means we just set up everything correctly with dagger healed. And yes, my build is finished. Let's take a look in the emulator. You can see it's just an empty app, but nothing is crashing. So that means our injection is working perfectly fine. So I really hope you understood all this dagger hill stuff. That is really everything about dagger hood. Now, if you understood that you can do anything with it, there won't come any more logic or any more theory about that. So we are now ready to use it in our project. And in the next video, we will start to implement our actual music service. So the heart of our application, so to say, if you enjoyed this video, and if you learned something new, please hit the the like button. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please hit the like button below, comment below what you think about this, what new concepts you learned. And also, if you're not a subscriber of my channel yet, then hit the subscribe button and don't miss regular Android content every second day. See you in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye bye.